Hello everyone, my name is Patricia Dennis and I am the lead instructor for the project Each One Teach One Peer-to-Peer -peer Creation of Blended Learning. Um, I was happily joined by my co-creating scholars and previous students of mine, Ezekiel Saab, Kiara Williams, Henry Palagici, Miguel Pierre, and Charlton Peterson. They will be leading the Q&A portion of this video as I created the um, overall kind of concept of our video. So let's get started. All right. So kind of what is the, what is the, what, how did our little project come to surface? So course evaluations are beneficial, beneficial assisting tools educators use to learn how to meet students' need in a course by way of determining how to modify and or improve with guidance from students' opinion and feedback experience. So this is kind of a little um, definition I um, kind of researched and looked up about like the general coordinates of course evaluation just so you all can get a brief understanding, which I know a lot of you are probably, are probably educators who've already done this before, but I just wanted to um, kind of clarify course evaluations in more of a um, definition standpoint. So course evaluate, so in my opinion, as an educator, I think students are the priority. It should always be taken into account when creating learning material, assessments, and using all the technology. So in my um, second master's currently, I'm studying, I am studying education technology where this idea of uh, technology is not, to, is not meant to replace the education, but to enhance it. So with that being said, I think when creating uh, student learning material, whether it's uh, an activity or, or an assessment or even um, um, presentation material, the student's perspective or the students um, should come first because ultimately they're the ones taking in this information, right? So the idea of this method is to build an autonomy and students taking control of their own learning. So with that, I will, the, when designing this uh, course, when creating my syllabus, I um, wanted to make sure that students had the utmost right to choose like what projects they want to work on, what materials they want to look at. Just giving them back that control of taking control again of their own learning and making them feel as if this is what they know how to do. So this is where my co-creating scholars come in. So um, the five young individuals who, again, will be leading the uh, live Q&A and my co-creating scholars became content specialists over the months that we worked on this project. Uh, and they also became education technology specialists as far as uh, learning various technologies that we can utilize in class and day to day to make learning a little more um, engaging and fun for both my learners and their uh, peers, right? So as I led and provided initial materials, so a lot of the material that I use, which is for, for the most part, the theories that uh, I taught the students and taught alongside my co-creating scholars. Those have been theories that I've used since I've been teaching the summer course. So about, I will say about, this is my third, maybe fourth year doing it. So as far as that content, it's been consistent and uh, my, the student, the co-creating scholars who are doing this, these projects with me have had these courses already and have um, taken this. So for the better part, they have, uh, they have also become masters of it, right? So the aim of this session seeks, seeks for participants to gain the following. One, utilizing the student's perspective approach when creating learning material. I think all of us at this point as technology experts, directors, and in this field, uh, when you utilize the technology, it's so versatile and vast that sometimes us educators can get wrapped up in the technology part and not in the pedagogy part. So that's, um, one thing I want all um, participants to come out of with this, a perspective in the use of co-creating of content with both educators and students. Um, this was very much unorthodox. It was very uh, hard to kind of, I wouldn't say hard, but interesting working alongside former students and getting their perspective. Uh, I came into this project very unbiased. Um, 
I wouldn't say my expectations weren't high, but it obviously, but so much I wanted to throw at my students, but they came in just willing and ready and prepared to do that. So uh, that's a perspective I think a lot of people should take into consideration with co-creating with uh, either other educators or previous students. It just gives you a whole different perspective than what you had uh, when first coming in. Uh, I also want to um, showcase open, inclusive, and equ equitable practices to utilize when teaching first year college students, which um, if you read kind of uh, the, um, our presentation overview, uh, the type of audience of students we're working with, they are, in, well, we're, we're from in New Jersey, they're considered at-risk students who literally are from urban areas who don't really have the accessibility and the information to succeed in college. So with that, that was one of also one of my biggest things I wanted to make this syllabus um, kind of um, shaped around. And I hope that you all come come out of this um, session with that same mindset. And last but not least, utilizing OER learning materials created for the EOF program. So syllabus, activities to do work for practical use during and after the conference. So. Um, between my presentation, the website, and everything within that website, which is going to be our content management system, I want to talk about a little bit later. I want it to be an OER, um, OER experience for all, all of you. I want you all to obviously make copies um, of the material and uh, source us. But other than that, please feel free to use um, all materials presented in the conference. So, syllabus plan examination. Obviously, I'm not going to read all of it, but kind of just skimming through it to give you guys a feel of the research that kind of went behind my decision making of uh, getting co creating scholars. So, reflecting on my own pedagogical, pedagogical procedures, I adapted the disruptive cognition approach that will embed the notion show what you know and each one teach one. Through peer support, learning can teach each other. Learners can teach each other other strategies, ideas, and ways of thinking. So when I thought about learners, uh, obviously I didn't really want to grab students, incoming freshmen who were coming in because they wouldn't know what was going on. So my my becoming sophomores and juniors and I, yes, yeah, sophomores and juniors, they have taken the lead with uh, as far as how we should go about utilizing technology and what technology we should use to let the students create certain projects which uh turned out really really fun and the students like really really enjoyed it but um yeah that peer-to-peer -peer support and that peer-to-peer -peer, um knowledge so my co-creating scholars were able to put into perspective uh the material that to me it looked perfectly fine you know it looked teacher proof it looked professor proof but to them it was like okay I think we can like dim down more of the terminologies and certain aspects of the technology to just make it fit these students so my co-creating scholars played a big big role in me adjusting um, my lesson plan so I kept these tips in mind when I examined three lesson plans from a language art so again uh kind of the structure I went about playing my lesson plan I um I wanted to go back to um elementary roots because again a lot of these students my co-creating, my, not my co-creating scholars, my incoming freshmen were all just recently graduated high school seniors. So I wanted to make the lesson plan look a lot familiar to them as far as like objectives and goals that you would see in a K to 12 classroom. So teachers sent instructor information and, part, and particular tasks were eliminated with the concern that may cause less cognition, engagement, disconnection, disconnecting learners from a meaningful sense of what they're doing. So after teaching the same subject for two summers, you know, at this point, I think, yeah, this is my third summer, I reflect on how my approach lacked proper tools and purpose. So again, uh, I had a lot of students say, oh my God, Professor Dennis, this class was amazing. I love it. How can we, uh, like, what, um, how can we help? But I had to remember each student, each group of um, cohort of students I get over the summer, they're different. And they all have their own different struggles. And with this particular group, COVID was obviously one of the biggest things for them. So that idea of sitting and learning and actually having that disruptive thinking and um, critical thinking were, was lost for almost two years because they were stuck behind screens where a lot of their teachers kind of didn't know what they're doing. And that's okay. So 
as an as an education technology specialist, uh, going to school for this, getting my degree in it, and also just loving using technology to enhance learning, I felt it was my obligation to um to really really switch around, right? All right. So here is our S. So the course was called SE 100 Context Lab Critical Theory and Technology. So the course description it was is designed for students who specifically need enrichment in literary skill sets. This is a lab that will provide the contextual basis for the literary skills and instruction in SE 100. Must be taken with a line. Um, excuse that CSE and SEU essentially they're the same classes. It's just that because um, our university status changed from college to university, um, they changed around the acronyms used for uh, these particular classes, but in the essence, they're all still the same. So my class acted as the um, lab portion where they got their context and theory and using like technology and sharing their experiences on their particular like topic or theory we talked about. And what they did was like navigated towards um, towards their papers, right? So student learning outcomes, um, I'll let you all read that on your own leisure as far as, uh, again, this presentation will be provided. So uh, learning and educating goals. So I decided I wanted to use ISTE um, as far as um, the standards I wanted to reach because uh, I think ISTE is, ISTE is really, really good. Uh, I took an ISTE class, um, last, well, ISTE seminar last summer. Um, before obviously um, teaching this class and I really truly enjoyed uh, the, um, the seminar so um, I decided I wanted to use ISTE as my um, learning goals. I broke them down between learners goals and educator, go educator goals so um, you all can obviously see not only did I take the learners into perspective but myself as well. So. Um, one was empowered learners, learners leverage. Learners leverage technology take an active role in choosing, um, achieving, and demonstrating competency on their learning goals, which you'll see a little bit later in this presentation. Um, digital citizenship, which uh, we use uh, students to recognize the rights, responsibilities, and operations of living, learning, and working in an interconnected digital world. Creative communicators, students communicate clearly and express themselves creatively for a variety of purposes during using the platform tools. Uh, educator goals, so this one's for me. And also I wanted to keep, uh, I shared this with my partner, teacher, the writing instructor, and my co-creative scholars, um, being leaders. Educators seek out opportunities for leadership to support student empowerment and sex to, and success to improve teaching and learning. Collabor collaborator, educators dedicate time to collaborate with both colleagues and students to improve practices. Hits the whole kind of essence of this uh, of our little project. And designer, educators design authentic learning driven activities and environment that recognize and accommodate learners reliability. So this lesson plan is adaptation adaptation from my original SCU uh, context lab. And again, uh, when I provide the presentation, everything is uh, clickable. So here are the performing tests. Again, I'm not going to read through it thoroughly all. Um, but I brought, instead of doing percentages, I wanted to make this like a game. Um, I always, for some reason, psychologically, uh, when I taught at um, another university, I utilized kind of like the point value system to, to tell the students like, hey, think of this as a game, right? Your goal for the end of each week is to get 200 points based on each, um, each component of what you need to do for the week. So at the Digital Citizen, this is where um, I had students, we utilized Instagram to, uh, excuse me. Utilize Instagram to um, basically uh, share out the work we did, share out the experience for the day. Um, this was a new experience for the students because they never use Instagram or social media in this manner, but they did enjoy it. Um, we have the do nows, which uh, was a kind of running a running Google Doc. I had students keep a uh, tally on. Um, I wanted to use Pinzu, but because of restrictions of the universities, like kind of like admin, it was difficult. So I just had the students utilize uh, Google uh, Docs. But I would recommend using Pinzu. It's very, very uh, user friendly, and I think it's a really cool software to make to uh, that looks like a notebook. 
independent reading and annotation. This will allow students to kind of do their own research where they found all of like one to two page articles based on the theories and they read it and annotated to help them create their projects. Course playlist work. Um, this is kind of one of those things. Uh, another uh, technology of course playlist is basically, which I'll explain a little bit later, is kind of like um, a documentation I created of selected materials and projects that students had the autonomy to choose all on their own to do whatever which one they wanted for the week. And then show notes, you know, project showcases. Uh, we kind of did this in the form again of intertwining it with uh, Instagram because of time restriction. But I had a lot of students who still felt confident in uh, showing me, showing me and their classmates their projects overall. So the content management system we used for um, to keep track and keep a hold of all our material is on Google Google Sites. Um, I think it's really Google Sites. It's so user friendly. Uh, I'll click it real quick just to let you all see what it looks like. Again, you all have access to this. Where it has our course schedule, course material, course activity playlist, which this is probably the biggest component of the website, and instructors page, which um, this is more so just for me. So, um, again, Activity digital citizenship. So this is designed to help you create various things. So I, this uh, Again, this is where the document kind of telling them all like what you need to do I wanted to keep this more fun and simple uh, Students became very very creative with as far as uh, the videos they uploaded and the pictures they uploaded on Instagram uh, Was it perfect? Was it what quote-unquote I wanted? No but the fact that they were able to explain themselves via social media about what these theories meant to them and how they see it in their day-to-day -day lives, it's even more than I can ask for. The fact that they're learning and they can regurgitate what they learn through social media, I can take it. Um, as far as, oh, my apologies, with um, social media activities, the photo dump, uh, the incoming freshmen utilize prompts by their co-creating scholars to uh, kind of write in for their um, kind of do now class starters. Uh, again, when we have the live Q&A, please feel free to ask my co-creating scholars about this. But they basically went about, um, they came up with the do nows, very, very informative questions. I thought they were really unique. Uh, my co-creating scholars really made um, our incoming freshmen think and kind of out of the box so they did a great job with that um independent reading and notation um this is where um uh students utilize the technology can be or even just as simple as google docs um to kind of like import their documents and make their annotations so basically more so wasn't me just testing their testing their research skills, but more so uh, seeing where what they come up with, what they find instead of everyone just reading the same thing. And I think Cammy was a really fun, cool tool to you, especially the fact that a lot of them used it already in high school. So this is uh, one of the biggest quote unquote technology pieces that I created myself was the critical theory and technology playlist. Well, I created the um, base construct, but my co-creating scholars came up with all uh, the projects. So on this list right here again, it was, I created this using a simple Google Doc, where I explain uh, what am I looking for for the week, and it's broken up into the charts, activities, direction, notes, and dates that need to get completed. Uh, this plate, so this plate is designated to help you, which is the incoming freshmen, create various technology-based projects to display your understanding of this week's focus theory. For this one was rational choice theory and patriarchy theory and politics. Although there's some strict deadline, it allows you to move at your own pace. Again, building that autonomy, giving students a control of what they want to learn and what they want to produce. And focus on what you need to specialize in. Like I know some of my students were strong writers. They got, um, they wanted to use short paper reflections, so they got that out the way so they could do more fun projects. So as the weeks went by, I increased the amount of projects they did. And I can say the students met the um, challenge. 
So while students were creating uh, their projects, um, my co-creating scholar for, scholars for each particular day they were assigned came in and acted as extra class support to kind of give the students a, another student perspective with these, um, with the uh, theories. So this is the reference page of all uh, the material I use to kind of gather my information. Again, if you, um, this was such a fun experience as far as like not being stuck behind a computer uh, for weeks trying to create a syllabus and praying that it works, but being able to collaborate with my co-creative scholars and them giving me their perspectives. So thank you so much for uh, listening to this video and Please feel free to ask my co-creative scholars any questions. Have a great day.